The North Carolina Division of Air Quality issued ozone alerts today for parts of the Asheville area, Charlotte, Hickory, and the Triangle. All of these regions were under an orange alert, meaning that the ozone levels in the air are unhealthy for anyone with respiratory disease. North Carolina doctors and public health officials say our cities are suffering from more air pollution related health problems than ever before. In the second of our three part series on air pollution, Dr. Tom Linden reports on the increased increasingly bad air in our region and what seems to be the culprit. It begins as a usual morning for Huntersville resident Byard Foss. To start the day, he whips up an omelet. But this is the one morning a week Boss tutors at a local school instead of going straight to work in Charlotte. It's the one morning a week he drives his car instead of taking the bus. It tests my patience quite a bit, and there's a lot of frustration on the road, and I see it in other drivers as well. So by the time I get to work and then have to concern myself with parking, then pay, and then walk during the long distance, um, it takes a little while before I settle down. When Boss started driving to work from his Huntersville home six years ago, the commute took 20 minutes. Now it takes an hour. North Carolina's traffic problems are getting worse. The number of miles driven on Mecklenburg County roads is up more than two and a half times in the last 10 years. And all that driving is polluting the air with ozone, say environmental experts. There are two ingredients in ozone. Nitrogen oxides, about a third statewide from cars, and volatile organic compounds, which in North Carolina come mainly from trees and industry. When these gases react with heat and light, they form ground level ozone. The same area. Good. <laughs> ozone is poisonous to humans. It's especially hard on children and those with breathing problems. In 1997, high ozone levels caused nearly 2,000 respiratory related hospital admissions in the state. Five of the country's 70 counties with the worst ozone pollution are in North Carolina, and Mecklenburg County tops the list at number nine. As communities like Mecklenburg County grow, traffic is made worse by the real culprit, urban sprawl. There's a very clear connection between urban sprawl and air pollution. With urban sprawl, what we see typically is more and more roads placed farther and farther away from a community center. These roads then, in turn, encourage development away from the city. That, in turn, encourages more frequent and longer car trips. The more we drive our cars, the more, um, the more air pollution we create. Emergency room physician Wes Wallace sees the effects of air pollution on a regular basis at UNC hospitals. As an appointee to North Carolina's Smart Growth Commission, he knows how sprawling developments like this one in Durham are at the root of dirty air. This is really a, an automobile-centric neighborhood. It's built to accommodate automobiles, not people. In a typical urban area like Durham, downtown is losing people to ever-expanding suburbs. Think of the metropolitan area as a donut with the inner city as the whole and losing people. The doughy outer ring, meanwhile, is full of people and cars and getting bigger every day. That's certainly the case with metropolitan Charlotte. That area in the center is downtown, which has shown little or no growth in the last 10 years. That's the donut hole. Around the hole is an orange-red ring of suburbs which have, in some areas, more than doubled in population in the last decade. Both the Triangle and Charlotte areas are growing rapidly. The 2000 census ranks both metropolitan areas in the top dozen fastest growing cities in their size ranges. And all that growth means more development. In the mid-1990s, Half a million acres went under the bulldozer in North Carolina. That's more than 11 acres an hour. But some developers are trying new ideas to limit the effects of growth. Under construction about 15 miles north of Charlotte in Huntersville is a 400-acre neighborhood called Vermilion. Vermilion's layout promotes walking instead of driving. Houses, townhouses, and apartments cluster together. 
Shops and restaurants will be within easy walking distance. Once you've become convinced that this is the best model that we should be doing as developers right now, it's very difficult to do anything else. Your conscience bothers you. The environmental advocacy group, the Sierra Club, named Vermillion one of the best developments in the country. A key feature is its location near a future rail stop linking Huntersville to Charlotte. This is the old historical Norfolk Southern line that they are negotiating with right now to make it a commuter or light rail train line. Access to the train means Vermillion commuters will have an alternative to driving. Charlotte and the Triangle are both developing rail systems to take some of the burden off local highways and reduce air pollution. In downtown Charlotte, the light rail system will run on the same tracks that Charlotte's old trolleys used until 1938. But regional planners say mass transit alone won't save North Carolina cities from urban sprawl and air pollution. Smart Growth Commission member Wallace says growing smart means ending haphazard development. The Smart Growth neighborhood is built where the citizens intended for their town to grow. It's built in an area where there uh, was already water and sewer or, and electricity or where the town planned to extend those services not in a green field far away from the city where the developer found the land cheaper. Urban development consultant Michael Gallus of Charlotte says even if one town in the metropolitan area follows principles of smart growth, its neighbors may not. Gallus says that's why urban sprawl is a regional problem and a regional governing body is key to a solution. Today growth goes across state lines, Atlanta's in 18 counties, Charlotte's in seven counties, uh, Raleigh Durham must be in five parts of the urban area, probably five or seven counties like Charlotte. Um, how do we elect this body and what would their powers be? Uh, th those are questions that have never been worked out in urban America. Local units of government are really left to their own devices. There's not sufficient coordination. So I think we've got in the state of North Carolina a crisis. <laughs> Until North Carolina's urban areas start acting regionally, sprawl will continue unchecked, making for longer drives and dirtier air for people like Bayard Bost. I moved up here, like many others, to get away from growth, and growth tends to follow those that move out. 